Hello, we have with us Dr. Anil Rajvanshi, a spiritual engineer who for last 40 years is leading a sustainable life in rural Maharashtra. Let us explore with him his experiences and innovations regarding sustainable living. Good evening, Dr. Rajvanshi. Thank you, Madhura. It's a really a pleasure that you are interviewing me. And uh, I hope through this uh, great forum of a podcast, I should be able to tell the viewers, or the, tell the listeners how we have been living for the last 35 to 40 years. So the first question is, what is the meaning of sustainable life and why is it important? That's a very deep uh, question because uh, uh, <clears throat> how do you define a sustainable life? Sustainability means that whatever in a small, very short cycle, you should be able to uh, have the energy and resources uh, which can be recycled uh, so that you don't have to um, uh, borrow or uh, uh, take from uh, outside. And a simple answer of sustainability is <clears throat> when you have a bank uh, account, then you should run your life only on the interest or the um, uh, money that you get monthly or whatever it is rather than dipping into your um, uh, fixed uh, deposits etc so the sustainability only comes when the input and output they match in a certain time now why is it important because you see the world is going through tremendous crisis uh, everybody is now being driven by the greed emotion and so everybody wants to live uh, a very ostentatious lifestyle and the media also fuels that and uh, to give an example if everybody lives in the lifestyle that uh, average uh, sophisticated western countries like united states scandinavian countries live then we will require four earths to sustain it and that is totally unsustainable and it is not good for the future of the world and that is why the whole thing of uh, uh, climate change, everything is uh, all driven by unsustainable lifestyle that uh, all of us are leading. It is leading to obesity. It is leading to almost everything um, uh, which is wrong. And so if we all go back to sustainability, we are not saying that you should go back to poverty. Sustainability can be had as we have shown in our life for the last 40 years. You can live a very emotionally satisfying, a high quality of life, but sustainable. Yes, that uh, leads to my next question. What has made your own life sustainable? So I ask because being a, uh, an engineer and also uh, working in renewable energy, I got my PhD in solar energy way back in 1979. Uh, at University of Florida and uh, I felt that uh, what in what way can I uh, make my life sustainable so that the energy requirement that I um, uh, you know energy requirement of me and my family can be reduced as much as possible and uh, without uh, uh, reducing the quality of life so that is what is sustainable we and then then the next question was after you reduce the energy consumption can you have from renewable energies that lifestyle um, maintained which means you do not require anything else now that second part has been a very still a difficult process and a work in progress but we have been able to reduce our energy consumption and I have shown that uh, in one fourth or one fifth, the amount of uh, energy that an average American consumes, we live a very, very good lifestyle with much uh, uh, emotionally satisfying. And that has been, uh, I think, our uh, focus. And it makes the life simple also 
because uh, when you start living simply you also um, do that because you um, practice spirituality because spirituality allows you um, uh, the wisdom to put a upper limit on the energy consumption that you make do you think something else can be done in your life to make it even more sustainable you said that you were working on something uh i do not know uh, naturally uh, um uh, as you grow older and i am now 74 years old um you obviously have uh, much less energy consumption you eat less you have uh, you travel less so this is this all obviously goes towards uh, um uh, sustainability and uh, with the modern technology that we have around at our disposal and we are using this technology right now as i am talking to you is uh, through the internet and um, through the um, uh, uh, computers and everything that you can really utilize much less energy to reach the high quality of thought in fact i plotted a graph long ago almost in early in late 1980s where i showed the quality of thought and the energy consumption and for people like buddha gandhi christ etc the quality of thought was very high as compared to the energy consumption whereas the modern um, you know very consumptive lifestyle that a lot of people in hollywood bollywood and other um, uh, people who lead um, is uh, they require huge amount of energy for very poor quality of thought the basic uh, um, thing is that if you go deeper into into yourself and that is a start of spirituality you consider you just ask yourself after all uh, what is my goal and if the goal is to do good work um great thinking then you do not require too much of uh, um other things for example you will al- always wear one shirt one pant what is the need to have 200 shirt 200 pants you will always drive one car to take you from point a to point b what is the point of having 10 cars and that too also rolls royce here there in india the quality of roads are really bad they um, uh, they are full of potholes so whether you are driving a rolls royce or a, a simple maruti that i drive you will not go more than 25 30 40 kilometers per hour so the whole purpose is defeated and i think when you start looking at it from a deeper point of view then you realize that the futility of uh, all these things and probably they come because of the fear because you want to impress you want to um, um, tell people you, you have arrived and that is a wrong way of uh, attacking the sustainability um, question and there's a wrong way for the world to go, go forward but that is how the whole um, media feeds uh, on the insecurity that if you will not have this then what will people say you should not think about what people say you should think about what you feel and think that's a great thought earlier you said that sustainability is not going back to poverty can you tell us some of the examples that you have done in your life which makes your life comfortable as well as sustainable uh i have written a um, uh, very <clears throat> big article on this how i live sustainably and uh, the uh, in this uh, podcast i am writing the link uh, to that article and we, which you can read and see how we live but to give you some simple examples i when i came uh, from united states we bought uh, a piece of land which was totally barren and the first thing we did was to plant trees and this was a very god for second place at night we used to get jackals we used to get a lot of you know we still is a um uh, it's a, it was outside uh, fulton town and uh, naturally the fulton town has uh, um, uh, become much bigger so we are now getting more and more into the center part of it but at that time it was a totally uh, barren place and uh, 
there was no trees etc so we planted the trees and uh, if you don't uh, um, uh, uh, you know you don't uh, uh, do uh, violence to the nature nature takes care of itself and so we just planted trees there was hardly any water we gave water by just uh, from the canal by um, buckets etc but once the roots got um, uh, established a whole garden today uh, two acres that we have and that we live in is like a tropical forest so it's a very powerful uh, message and that is the first sign of sustainability so that is what we did then we built a house because fulton has a, a, a actually a very good um, uh, um, uh, um, uh, climate but during summer it gets very hot sometimes touching 44 45 degrees celsius and but dry and so i built the house uh, with a very thick walls 16 inches thick walls stone and bricks and then most of the heat energy in any house comes from the roof almost 80 percent so on the roof i put uh, gunny sacks uh, put the, um, uh, the sprayed them two times a day with water and that evaporating water cooled the gunny sacks and when the cool air from the roof came down the whole house became almost like air condition the thick walls with the uh, windows closed during the summer and so the out outside temperatures around 45 44 degrees celsius and inside are cool 28 29 degrees celsius the interesting part is that this air conditioning costs one tenth the cost and the energy of the regular air conditioning and with way and uh, with hardly any electricity so these are the simple simple things that uh, we did to make our life uh, simple and uh, sustainable and then you have all the computers and etc so you can be connected to the world see wh wh what the world is doing and uh, yet have a very comfortable lifestyle in the same way uh, we um, try to recycle as much as possible all the things for example all the paper that i use is written on both sides once the paper is once that is over we bring the paper and uh, use it in our uh, water boiler uh, we have a lot of uh, agriculture uh, we have a lot of uh, wood um, uh, shaving uh, wood droppings from our trees so all our hot water requirement is taken care by this uh, simple hot water boiler the ash from it goes into our garden as a fertilizer uh, we whatever we eat we try to finish everything we eat very quite less uh, and uh, the kitchen waste goes into the compost where it is composted and it is, becomes a nice fertilizer after some time and uh, the mo most important thing is that we never waste any food uh, all the food that is uh, what we eat is also given to our dogs and cats and uh, um, the amount of water that we use we try to use as little as possible today there's a very major crisis and um, uh, if you use it just for your um, uh, benefit then you can reduce your water consumption for example when you brush our teeth we don't have the um, uh, water running in the taps we close the tap and um, uh, just after you brush the teeth and you open the tap um, uh, do gargles and that's the end of it a um, lot of the water that we use is used by our maids in washing dishes etc and they do not have the same quality of thinking regarding water usage as we have and so this is what uh, uh, happens then all in the whole garden in our at our house we have drip irrigation so the amount of water used in for uh, putting uh, water in these trees and uh, plants is also drastically reduced so in a very little amount of water we um, uh, live a very decent lifestyle as i said i still you know for example in 1984 i got my first uh, maruti car and i drove there for the last uh, till the five years ago when the um, uh, car uh, the Maruti people said you can't get uh, spare parts and we cannot um, insure this etc etc so I had to give it away then you bought another small car 
and we drive very little and so that energy consumption is uh, also there then our cooking is done on the lpg that we get from the market we tried uh, using a very efficient uh, wood stove but that was a uh, too much of trouble for our people who cook so the gas really helps and uh, continuous uh, telling them to use less gas etc has uh, improved our cooking efficiency also so electricity we try to use as much as possible as, as little as possible the gas and the um, water now when we do all the calculations then we find that uh, we are we have as i said around one fourth to one fifth of the energy consumption of an uh, average american we live in a very very sustainable way and a very um, emotionally satisfying way these are very simple yet great examples and ideas that you told but do you think that living in a rural area makes it easier for you to lead a sustainable life and how can people in big cities live sustainably yes that that is true because uh, and you know uh, this has to do a lot with the planning when i came we built this house etc right from beginning we thought about sustainability now when you go in a big city uh, all around you are unsustainable things happening but yet you can live a sustainable life by actively and very um, uh, positively looking at things the energy consumption the um, uh, trying to uh, recycle things trying to save energy and one can do that for example if you have to go 1 km etc think about can you just walk because we have been some in big cities uh, cycling and etc is quite dangerous the the traffic is pretty bad so think about walking walking is very good for the um, exercise at the same time it uh, you you walk and think a lot of my thinking has come from long walks the only thing is in big cities is that you will be inhaling lot of pollution and uh, naturally there's a lot of both noise and air wise so uh, that you have to see how to do it so i feel that if each one of us also becomes sustainable in our, in our life whether we are living in rural areas or urban areas then i think the sustainability index of a country can really go quite high right so this means that first the thought of living sustainably should come to our mind and there then there should be some research and planning and then everybody on this earth uh, can do it yes you know for example you you see around yourself such obscene lifestyles people living in hundreds of thousands of uh, square meters house just two of them with a lot of uh, servants and a lot of things and in fact most of that house is basically for the servants and not for you and you just wonder ki uh, what uh, um, the world is coming to because the whole idea is then to just try to impress see this whole basis of trying to impress is the start of the greed and the start of the whole unsustainable living if you look at uh, yourself internally that what is the uh, most important thing in your life and then accordingly act then uh, you will become sustainable and the greed impulse can be reduced thank you i hope our audience finds your life lessons important doable and all of us start living sustainably thank you very much madhura it was a pleasure